Hello, 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 and welcome to Pitch Zone, a weekly get together of coaches that help one presenter improve and fine tune a short pitch. Our presenter today, I'm very, very excited because it is once again Shalini Menezes. She is coming back after pitching here and getting a lot of feedback. Two weeks ago, right, Shalini? Two weeks ago. Two weeks, yeah. So uh, welcome back, Shalini. How are you today? Doing fantastic, Claudio. How are you doing? Really, really good. And hello to those that watch us live on YouTube. I'm so happy to see Let's Go Viral back here again. I actually missed you the last couple of weeks or the last week, two weeks ago. So really, really great to see you. And of course, also Fancy and Fleek, which was our presenter last week, I think, or two weeks, last week, right? Last week, last week. Uh, okay, okay. So uh, it's always great. And then we have Shill. Shill, Hello, Shill, another huge LinkedIn user and always, always great feedback that Jill is presenting here as well or giving us through YouTube. So I'm looking forward to a great, great, great session. Shalini, are you ready? Today you're not using any slides, right? I'm not using any slides. No slides. I like that <laughs> because you have to be able to pitch in any situation and many, many situations. Slides are just not appropriate, but you want to get your message out smoothly and elegantly. So I really, really look forward to that. And of course, we have our coaches that will help you fine tune that pitch. Are you ready to meet them, Shalini? Yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> so let's bring in Nathan Gold, hailing from San Francisco, a pitch coach extraordinaire, has been doing this for 15 years already. Nathan, welcome back to Pitch Zone. Ooh. Happy to be here. Can't wait to see your presentation. That was a little bit of a pilot error here. <laughs> no problem. We, we are actually always, always enjoying when these things happen to the best, right? Because it just shows, you know, it's, we, we, we put ourselves on you because we don't want any sound to come in while we are not talking. And then it's so easy to not push those buttons. All good, all good, all good. Nathan, real yes. pleasure having you, of course. I'm going to put Thank you. you into the coach's role right over here, here, okay. here. <laughs> you to be here. Over there somewhere. There we go. And Stuart Pink, our coach number two today. Stuart, always a great pleasure seeing you. How are you today? I'm great. Thanks, Claudio. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. And Shalini, I want to congratulate you already because I think the classic mistake people make is they think, speaking you just do it once and then you're done and the best way to improve is is to keep practicing and so i'm so excited to hear you present again today thank you Stuart. wow that is that is absolutely perfectly said and Stuart, Stuart, you are you are an experienced competition speaker you came in third in the world championship of public speaking a couple of years ago have you ever counted or added up the hours of preparation that you put into that performance? I, I have. I, I don't have an accurate number, but the number of drafts of my speech and the yeah. number of practices, I, let's put it this way, I've lost count. It, it was yeah. so many. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's absolutely amazing. And I think a lot of people underestimate what it really, really takes to have a superb pitch uh, superb presentation. You know, one other example, I think, is Steve Jobs, who was known for putting in, I don't know, about an hour for every minute that he was talking. So it is, you know, uh, I forgot who said it, some famous, famous his historic figure that said, if you 
fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. So this is, this is really what we are all about here, is to help founders, startup founders, prepare. Scotty, hello, good morning, good morning. <laughs> you are in San Francisco, Scotty. It's very early in the morning, of course, for you. Welcome yeah. back yeah. to Pitch Zone. How are you? Thank you. I'm well. And Shalini, welcome back also. Glad you're, you're back to um, uh, tell us more. And it's, it's hard. You know, what you're trying to do is a hard thing. So congratulations to you, as Stuart said. And um, it, it, the iterations help, which is how it works. Oh, cool you. beans, cool beans. So I'm going to put you for the moment here onto the coach's row as well, Scotty. And that gets us almost ready to listen to Shalini's pitch. But of course, we want to enjoy that moment before where your nerves are starting to Really? <laughs> just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. But I do want to very, very quickly mention that we are doing this program every single week. And I invite you to come to Pitch Zone if you want to fine tune your own pitch. And originally, we set this up that you know, a presenter comes in once and then, you know, gets feedback and goes their merry way. And we realized, based on discussions we had with presenters like Shalini, that once may not be enough. So we are very, very happy to help you fine-tune your pitch in up to three sessions. And that's pretty much the, the, the ticket, I think, is three times because the first time you get a lot of feedback the second time you do you refine and then the third time that's really typically the charm so if you are interested please go to pitchzone.life and let me know that you are interested in coming in here and we'll make that happen and very briefly before we start if you haven't subscribed yet whenever click that button below okay so shalini today you're gonna do this without slides i'm gonna change to your presenter uh, view here and just before you start i'm gonna display a stopwatch well maybe maybe not I'm going to display a stopwatch right up above you that you get uh, that you can use to pace yourself or speed up. Try to keep it to roughly three minutes. All right. I'm a little under three. I'm around two thirty today, so I'm keeping. That's it short perfect. Time. I like short, sweet, and to the point. So, Shalini, whenever you're ready, take a deep, deep breath and. When you start talking, I'll stop. Start the clock. Okay, I'm ready. Five. Five. Five percent of the world's patents are commercialized. Why do you think that is the case? Well, some patents should just not be granted, right? Like take uh, like a leash for your pet snake. But what about the others, like the printing press or the safety pin or your jeans? Such simple yet elegant innovations, right? Now, think of something more contemporary. We have oxygenated water, which can transport, which can travel through your cell membrane and transport vitamins to you. or a cream that can cure diabetes-related wounds at the point of amputation. Now, like, now imagine, I'm not going to name any sites, but imagine you're on this particular website where you are picking up a domain name. Along with the domain name, you add a website, some website services. Oh, and also throw in a patent. And while you're there, throw in some technical know-how and inventor support. And you got yourself a business. But I already have a business, you say. 
But at some point, you're going to think about growing it or scaling it or pivoting. At that point, patented network is going to put patents to work for you. How is it going to be? Isn't it already there? Aren't people already doing this? Well, yes, there are a couple of such platforms, but they don't cater to people like you and I. They tie up with the big companies and the rates and the services are not accessible to people like us. So what about transparency? What about, is there too much paperwork? Am I going to be having to file 10,000 forms? Is it easy? Yes, we got you covered. Minimal paperwork, we got it all. How would we know it's the right patent for us and if it's at the right value for us? Don't worry. Our team of technically qualified legal and finance experts are going to help you maneuver through all the technical and number crunching parts without you having to sweat it. Okay, so what are you waiting for? If you are a business owner or you are looking to start a new business, come talk to patented.network and we are going to help you find the right patent to grow your business to pivot your business and take you to the next level. Email me to know more. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. I liked it. I absolutely liked it. Um, but let's just immediately jump to one other of the coaches, Stuart. Um, what kind of feedback do you have for Shalini today? Yeah, Shalini, great job. Well done. Um, I think it was a huge improvement without slides. I think we often say when you're presenting, only use slides if they're absolutely essential. And I think last time you presented, they weren't essential. And I think you showed that today. So that was fantastic. I thought you had a much more dynamic opening and, and really caught the attention and, and what you did was you focused on that one statistic that we talked about last time. Now I haven't completely made my mind up whether what you did is what I would do or whether because you said five and for a moment I'm thinking hang on what five what and I might be tempted to go with five percent so that I know, ah, okay, 5%, and then I'm thinking, um, okay, what's this 5%? You then went into some examples, and I liked the examples, but you need to be a little bit careful. I, the, the one of the leash for a pet snake, I thought that was quite funny, but give us a moment to, to let it sink in. Hang on, that's a ridiculous... Um, invention why would you want a patent for that if you move on too quickly past something we can't absorb it and then my gut feeling is that there might have been a few too many examples after that um, because i think it took about a minute and we were just going through examples and there were a couple of examples that were complicated examples you had one it was about oxygen, oxygenated water, anything with long syllables, even as a native English speaker, I'm thinking, oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it's hard to say. The next thing you had a word beginning with D and I don't even know what that word, I think it was even longer and even more complicated. <laughs> so obviously anything like that, you don't need in a, in a pitch, just oh. keep it as simple as you can. And, and probably you didn't need those examples any anyway um so i really loved the way you brought it in and i i think the one overall thing that I, I would still be working on is i'm not completely clear what your company does i i have a sort of sense but i i think i'm also filling in with some background from what i know from your last presentation so i think that's the bit that you want to make completely clear that there are all these patents out there the 95 percent that aren't out there already and that that's your market you've got those people come to you and, and that they're really useful 
Um, but overall, I, I thought it was really, really effective. Well done. Thank you. Wow, such great feedback as always. And before I hand it over to Scotty, I quickly want to turn to the comments because she made uh, a couple of really good observations. And of course, you know, there are so many facets to a good pitch. There is the content, the structure, and of course, your delivery, and especially when we are online. And she'll notice that your eye contact and your enthusiasm, that together made it a really engaging presentation. Uh, uh, continuing here, he found the flow of domain plus website plus patent, a brand new business, very interesting. I will give a practical example of a client who has built such a business with you. And don't forget your credentials, Shalini. You are an expert. You are a mm. PhD, right? So thank you, Jill. This is so important. And I notice, you know, some of the most qualified people are just so humble and they feel they are bragging when they are talking about their accomplishments, but there are ways how you can weave this information into your pitch without sounding like a braggart. So um, very, very good observations, Shell. Thank you for sharing that. And moving on to Scotty. Scotty. There we go. Mm -hmm. um, yes, <laughs> I, I actually love the five, Stuart. I thought five alone worked for me. Got to get my hand in the right place. Um, there we go. Hard to do. So, so I thought that was great. And then I even like the pet snake reference. A little bit more time and maybe a transition sentence right there could have been, or better yet, a cream for diabetes that can be applied before, you know, and right before amputation is needed. You know, these things are out there. Maybe you, maybe you could add something like that. And that may have been enough. Those two may have been enough good examples, or maybe you could give one or two, no, one or two more, but not, I think there were five or six and I couldn't keep track of them all. Um, and then it, the transition I thought was a little bit tricky when you talked about, imagine a, a a website which I won't name, where you can get a domain name, um, a web developer, and patent information. So, is that something you're doing or not? Because that made it really confusing to me. And at that point, we still hadn't heard the name of your company. Okay. And also, who was this? Who was the audience for this? Who was your target audience for this? A person who would buy patents from me. Okay. Okay. To use so, the business. Right. So that, that, that wasn't quite, it didn't come through. It didn't really grab me by the throat, if, if you will, and say, this is for you if you're, if you're in this audience. So um, I, I think when you talked about uh, for people like you and I, or you, or you and me, you could, you could switch that wording around there. Okay. Also, diabetes has a major stress on the, fir on the first E. So it's diabetes. Okay. And inventor. So, so you may want to talk to talk to your son. Haha, <laughs> no, a little bit. Um, you you can play with. So English is a stress timed language, and that means that we use stress with length and loudness over the majorly stressed vowel sound in in a word, and we also use it over sets of words in a sentence. So you can play with that. And I'd be happy to talk to you offline if you'd like to talk a little bit more about it. Um, I think yes, overall please. your delivery was very, very good. There were just a couple of vocabulary words where <clears throat> for people who aren't familiar with the words, if the stress isn't on the right syllable, it causes a little hiccup in the back of our brains. So what was that word? Like maybe diabetes was the word that Stuart was referring to earlier. <clears throat> I'm mm -hmm. not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, we also didn't hear the name of the patent network, like the name of your baby um, until a minute 36. So I think maybe to bring that in, sooner, maybe after the two examples, right? 5%, that's the number that actually go to market. Why? The, these are examples. This is what we can do for you. And if so, are you working with that unnamed website already? Like, are there any, you know, clients you can mention, any, any tac 
tactical tact any actual good morning i'm waking up here any any actual client this or you know or examples that you can give i think would be super helpful and of course your credentials it was brilliant uh, from the other you know person calling in why you because you're not only are you selling your story and being able to retell it but why are you the person who can actually execute this we heard it at the end last time yeah okay so um I have a double master's in physics, so the technology part and the law part, and uh, I'm, I'm a PhD in finance. So you need all these three for efficient IP, man IP management, and yeah. that's why I'm the right person. But I really don't know how to weave it into a narrative. I don't know <laughs> how to... Oh, I would, I would, well, I'd consider putting it in after you give the two examples. A leash for your pet snake, cream for diabetes, and um, and we've and we've come up with a solution. Patent uh, patent net, patented network. My background is in just what you said. You can you know spice it up a little bit, and you need these three to actually bring a patent to market. Okay. Maybe it's that simple. I'm sure Stuart and Nathan will have and Claudia will have some other comments, but I but I think you could weave it in a little bit sooner there. And um, I also got a little bit confused at the end. It's something like, how would we, know? you said something about how would we know? The technology qualifies a legal, uh, we can provide legal and finance experts and technology experts for your patent. I got kind of lost in there. I think when you were trying to explain how patented network works. Yes, but I was, trying to do it more like a dialogue thing where you, you're asking me, but what about transparency? What about uh, filing paperwork? And is it going to be complicated? And uh, my, my um, pitch was that we, our team of uh, technical, legal, and finance experts are going to handhold you through this entire thing so it's not messy at all. Well, I think you could go from the dialogue, which you executed beautifully, I think, in the beginning, to... And let me give you the answers. Here's the here's the solution. Patented network. We can we provide X, Y, and Z to help facilitate your success with bringing your patent to market. I think it's okay to shift that narrative because because I got I got kind of lost in that narrative also after after the first minute. Or like before the first minute, then you entered, then you said the name of the company. I think it was at 136. And then at 219, I was getting confused. I was trying to take notes and I think it was going a little bit too fast for me <clears throat> to follow the narrative. And I think a break there might be helpful. So. Wow. Oh. Excellent. Excellent feedback. Now, Scotty, there is one thing around the language and I've, I've noticed it every time Shalini says her company name, but because it's her company name, I never wanted to bring it up. Um, how do you say your company name, Shalini? Well, depends on who I'm, I'm speaking to so many people from such different parts of the world that my brain mm -hmm. is kind of mm -hmm. a giant mess. So if I'm talking, the, the website was a gift to me from a friend in in Ohio and mm -hmm. he calls it patented network okay and when I speak to people in India they call yep. it patented network uh -huh. okay yep. so, so my brain is always having this tug of war yeah well no your brain is brilliant don't don't say don't say anything other than that <laughs> um, what do you want the name of the company to be so I think you should call it what you want it to be called patented network Patented network. Then I would just stick to. I would just stick with that. Yeah. I mean, if, I, if you are only speaking with people in India who call it patented network, that's fine too. Um, but it's again, it's what. How, how do you want the brand to be represented? I think you should be consistent with that. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks so much, Scotty. And before we move on to. Nathan, I want to pull up a couple more comments here. The first one from Giovanna, fancy and fleek. 
She loves how comfortable you are presenting, and that usually is already a big, big win, right? The more comfortable you are, the better it is. And then let's go viral. Uh, has a question here. What does people like me mean? Women, brown, Indian, who people? So you may want to clarify there what you mean by people like me. All right, Nathan, you're up next. All right. Okay, Shalini, so I'm really pleased to go last because I wanted to hear the other comments and your feedback from what, we, what you just heard today. And it was exactly what I was hoping came out here today. Uh, <clears throat> your, your pitch to me today was the best performance you've given us over the last three from the voice, the gestures, the conversational tone, everything Stuart said, everything Scotty said, everything Jill said is, is spot on. And of course, Claudio. What I want to bring to your attention is that in these three minutes, if your focus is a potential company or person in that company that wants to buy patents or looking for patents to help their company grow and so forth and so on, it feels like you could have started more with tying it into them at the beginning. In other words, giving them a reason, more of a curious reason to listen beyond that 5%. Meaning, and I don't know if I, I might have missed it, but after the 5%, it felt like to me, you would have had my attention more if you would have said, now, what about that 95%? And then I would harp on that 95% as the thing that you're bringing to the table for them to have access to. Am I, am I on target with that in terms of, you're not about the 5%, you're more about the 95%. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it feels like th that could be more integrated into some more persuasive language to get them curious, interested, leaning forward even more, realizing, wow there's probably some gold nuggets, no pun intended, inside those 95% of the patents that never reach the eyeballs of anybody in the world. And you are those eyes. So you can bring that clarity and, and do everything, all the value-based examples that you, you gave us here today, or the value that came out of the examples you gave us here today, can begin to get them emotionally charged about, oh, wow, maybe this is great for us and for me. Oh, I can't wait to hear more, 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 more. So I don't want to repeat anything really anybody else said in terms of too many examples or blah, 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 because it's all been said. But to me, it feels like today you kind of swung the pendulum almost a little bit too far to the left in terms of as much detail as you gave us, which is quite natural and a good thing to have happen. And now it's just a matter of getting it back towards that middle part where at the end you can almost say to the audience, if you might have actually said this, I made a note here, if you're looking to buy patents or you want to see what patents are available to expand your business, let's talk. So it feels to me like if you're going to do it in three minutes, we almost need one more, or you can do this on your own. I think from, from the three sessions that we've come with, come with you, uh, that you have come with here, uh, you should be able to get this into a form where you can take it right out to the real people. I feel like right now, just go out and try one-on-one -on -one with a, a real person beyond us and then go to the second and then the third. And by the third or fourth person, you'll have, you'll have your spiel to get them to say, oh, tell me more. Okay. But I really appreciate you coming back three times. You're a clear example of how just iterating on something like this pitch helps improve it from all angles. But your performance you. today was spot on thank you it's my second pitch today well there you go that's another good example for our audience to realize is that you need to warm up <laughs> <laughs> right so you warmed up before that this one did you warm up before that one too i don't remember i was that's maybe i did no. i don't remember but <laughs> <laughs> if you don't she remember it's she... probably a no she was in the okay. zone <laughs> that's right <laughs> Already thinking about the zone. Well, thank you for coming back again. Sure, thank you. So Shalini, I just wanted to build on what Nathan was talking about with that 
statistic. I, I completely agree with him. And, and you've done the hard work of you picked out the statistic that mattered the most, but then you have to explain it and make sense of it. And I absolutely agree that you've got the 5%, but we want to talk about the 95% because that is your business. But also, this is an interesting example of how you have to think about your audience. Because if you were pitching to investors, the excitement with the 95% is look at all this untapped wealth here that, that will be a great investment opportunity and can make this business go big, which I think is a little bit of what you were doing in your last presentation to us. If you're pitching or, or presenting to potential customers, of course, that 95% is look, look at the wide range of everything that we have we've got something in here that you need so i think it's always important to just try and interpret these statistics for your specific audience and then the other thing again it, it might depend on how knowledgeable your audience are but you don't explain why is a patent important or why is it important to commercialize a patent. Now, again, it might it might be that that's a given with with whoever you're presenting to, but it might not be. So, so people might need to know well, why do I need a patent? Well, because you could lose your rights to everything if you don't have it and someone else takes it. Okay, that makes sense. Why why does it need to be commercialized though? That's the whole point of your business. So, I, I liked that bit in your pitch where you got to the businesses need to grow scale or pivot and then they come to you but that also made me think might they not need this at the beginning as well though so would you want to start out with it as well as thinking that the grow scale and pivot point so i just feel like these are all things to think about and, and honestly it might change depending on the individuals that you find yourself in front at at any given time but it, it's a it's an example of how when you give a speech or presentation, you have a framework that you're following, but you tweak it just slightly depending on who you're in front of and what they need to know. And of course, if afterwards there are questions and answers, that's the perfect time for you to explain more. But you always want to do your best possible job of tweaking it to your audience when you give the initial presentation. Scotty. Yeah, I'm, I got lost there for a minute. Speaking of, <laughs> where did it go? So, um, Shalini, I, I had two. I have two thoughts here. One is, as Nate, as um, everybody was suggesting, you know, go ahead and and if you aren't already, you should be giving the same presentation to, you know, friendly folks and our clients or you know potential clients. But one thing I discovered early on is if you can ask somebody to repeat to you what they think your business is about it will give you really good feedback in terms of what they heard and perhaps you'll get some new ideas of how to describe what you do and that's actually how i came up with the name of my business because i was telling somebody about what i wanted to do and he's like oh so you want to be an english coach it's like boom that's how i came up with it but i hadn't really thought of saying it that way so have you tr have you tried that thus far uh, no, I, to be honest, I haven't. I actually, the only person I did was the friend who got me the website as a present and he came up with a name by himself and then I just stuck with it. Uh, was it. but, but yes, I think I have to try doing that and see if, I mean, that's a good idea. That's a good way to judge if people understand what I'm doing. Yeah. And somebody who doesn't know anything about the business even is almost better. Um, because they'll give you a, a gut reaction about this is what, you know, is this what you were trying to do? And, and then it'll help you, you know, fine tune your opportunity to describe your business to different audiences. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was just noodling around on your website, which is super cool. And even the lead line for that, when, when I Googled it was, um, so patented network, we're a platform of due diligence, ready patents, or we provide a platform of due diligence, ready patents where investors, venture capital firms, et cetera. Um, anyone with a financial heft and acumen for turning ideas into business can do it. 
you know, so you could paraphrase that, um, okay. I think as well, because that, that didn't really come out clearly to me in the presentation. And I, okay. and I hadn't looked at your website, you know, before, this morning I was, you know, getting up and if people are sleepy or busy, again, they need to hold on to something that they can retell from your presentation. So yeah. you might be able to noodle that in somewhere. So. Okay. And what, and what is, um, oh, sorry. I was looking at your information, laser physics to legally blonde. So that's your reference to having studied physics and being a lawyer? Yes. Yeah. Cool. No, that's cool. But I can't get more than that, can I? Yes, there I can. I think can. It, exactly. yeah. You got it in Ohio State. That's where you got your master's in science in laser and plasma physics. Okay. Right. No, I'm from Mumbai. Okay. Got it. Okay. That is there. I just Ohio, double check. Yeah. yeah. Ohio State was biophysics. With biophysics, okay. You need to put that in there somewhere. That need we need to hear about you again because you are well spoken and you give a great presentation. Every everything looks right, you know, everything looks good, looks great. But but again, why, you know, what's the secret sauce? And the secret sauce I think is your background and then likely your team, your background experience and team. There is no team. There is well, no there are three people. <laughs> there are three people on your That's website. me. Yes, well, they then, provide consultancy when I need it. They provide support. Um, okay. But right now, I think most of the work is being done by me because I'm trying to build a team, coach people and build a team. Well, then then it's you. I'm the same thing. I'm, I'm the president and the, the admin staff and the cleaning staff. So yes. I'm it. But but I my expertise is deep and I'm able to tell a variety of vignettes to different audiences so that they understand that my expertise will work they can understand whether my expertise will work for them or not. Right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. No, your website's super cool. Thank you. Check out my privacy policy, Scotty. Okay. All right, Charlene, I wanted to jump back in because I uh, sometimes uh, the obvious is staring us in the face and perhaps you, well, first of all, let me go back and say, when I threw my arms up when you told us about your double masters and your PhD, you might have noticed I got wildly excited physically here because when you're asking us, how do you tell somebody about who you are and establish that credibility? If you just go back and listen to what you told us, just say that. <laughs> I mean, it was one sentence. I have a double masters and a PhD, which gives me the credibility, blah, 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 blah. All right. Well, that's one way to say it. There's probably 12 different ways you could make that into a story like opening without saying I, 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 you know, back when I was doing my first master's and then I went to the second master's and then I finished my PhD, blah, 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 blah. That combination of education gave me blah, 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 blah. And so you have such an amazing background that please do not, do not hide it from your audience, especially when you're talking to customers, well, investors as well, but you've got it. And I think you've heard that from most of us. But the, the obvious one that I wanted to say to you is that maybe your opening could also play on the name of your company. You are the patented network. Now, why would anybody n need a network of patents or to you know play with those words a little bit and you might be able to just launch right into exactly what you're doing for those people sitting in the room and they go oh wow cool and then they remember the name of your company because you use it in a either a, a an analogy or a metaphorical sense or a literal sense with your audience so toy with that okay. i know you, you're a company of one right now but you have a couple of people that you can brainstorm on that and see maybe that could be a way to Oh, network, patent, lots of possibilities. Right. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Wow. So much feedback today. Shalini, are you happy? Yes, I was nervous, but I'm, I'm pleased. And I already have my neurons firing for, for what I want to do. Since we had talked about this, that I'll present with slides the next time. And I'm already working on the slides. And now I have some, some very cool ideas after Nathan spoke. Oh, this is so awesome. And I really, really look forward to seeing 
the third time. Because again, we all believe here the third time is the charm, or at least gets you to the real essence of the pitch and gets you to, you know, get it from your mind into the hearts of your audience. And so I have a very, very quick question for you, Shalini. And that is, what do you want your audience to feel? I want them to feel that, wow, it's so simple. And this would be perfect for my business. And I'm going to go get a patent right now. Okay. 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 Keep that in mind when you are creating the next iteration, right? Because it mm -hmm. is pretty much all about feelings. So, yes, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you come in a third time. And we are really getting to the end of this. One question. Yeah, sure. Quick question. Mm -hmm. So if I start putting in all the things about my background, mm -hmm. that doesn't give me enough time in my three minutes to talk about the company and what it does. <laughs> no, you, you it's, it, it's only one sentence or two sentences. It's not a deep dive into your background. It's part of your story. That's all. How many, how many years have you been doing since your, since you started your first masters, how many years has it been roughly? 22 years. All right. So after two decades of working in finance, the dun and dun and dun. I mean, come on, it's not that hard. You just need to say it in, in a humble way that's not bragging and pounding your chest and saying, we don't need the detail. It's not an I story. It's more of a journey story. Right. And okay. by the way, I don't have my PhD yet. I'm almost there, but I don't have it yet. So <laughs> all right. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's closure. fine. You can be you can be honest with your audience and either saying, and I'm, you know, one year away from the PhD, if you want, it all depends on the audience, as Stuart was saying earlier. All right. And that really gets us to the end for today. Um, but before we wrap this up, I very briefly want to bring in our presenter for next week, Paul Kit. Paul Kit Sharma, you are going to be here the next time. You may need to move your camera a little bit because we can... Yeah, there you go. This looks a little bit better. Paul Kit, without giving the store away, tell us what you're going to present next week. Tease us. Tease us. Why should we listen to your pitch next week in 30 seconds or less? Yes, uh, next week I'm going to present uh, my platform the un universal diagnostics platform it is a genetics based platform for disease diagnostics and i'll be covering a lot of new technologies and molecular assays that i have developed in uh, 15 years of hard work in six countries thank you wow 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 so i'm i'm really looking forward to this because I know we had a discussion. You are a very, very, um, you know, specialized person. You, you are dealing yes. with something that is so complex that it sometimes is difficult to present it in a way that lay people will understand. So this will be a great, great session next week. I look forward to it and helping you making your message um, somehow palatable for all of us and not only those that are specifically in your field. So I'm really, really looking forward to it. Thank you for joining us briefly here, Paul Kitt. And with that, we are really at the end of today's show. I want to thank all of the coaches. Thank you very much, everybody over here. And Bye. Of course, Shalini and Pulkit will see you next week. And with that, enjoy your morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world, and see you again next week. Bye-bye.
Bye.